miss you, church family. And remember, Jesus has risen and he is alive. Happy Easter. Hey, ABC, we miss you guys on Sundays. This is the Benedict family saying hello. Hope you're all staying safe. Take care. Bye. Bye. Hey, ABC, this is the Wilson family. And we just want to say that we really miss you guys so much. Happy Easter. Good morning, Good morning, ABC Church. We miss you and hope you have a great Sunday. Happy Easter from the Thomas family. We miss you at church. Happy Easter from the Payans. We miss you a lot. The three of us, Koenig, sure do miss you all so much. And Joel especially misses giving you hugs. We hope you celebrate Resurrection Sunday with much gratefulness. Happy, happy Easter. Easter! Everybody, happy Easter from the Spraski family. Uh, we hope you're enjoying this time with each other uh, just like we are. Working from home takes a little bit of an adjustment, but you know, I've really learned to enjoy it. And I know the kids were all getting along perfectly and we hope you are too. So happy Easter and I uh, hope you have a great day and we'll see you hopefully soon. <laughs> happy Easter! Hey, happy Easter. Happy Easter from the St. John family. We all miss we you. All miss you. We miss you. We can't wait till we're back together again. Happy Easter! Hi, ABC Church. I'm Will. And I'm Kathy. We're the Hesh family. We miss you guys and hope everyone's safe. Have a wonderful Easter, and we'll see you soon. Happy, Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Hi, church family. Hi, everybody. Happy Easter from the Barnetts. Happy Easter from the Smiths. Good morning and happy Easter. Thank you so much for joining us uh, at ABC at 10 o'clock. So good to be gathered together with you online um, and celebrating my favorite Sunday of the whole year, which is the Sunday that Jesus rose from the grave, conquering death once and for all, proving that life has returned. And you and I this morning get to celebrate the fact that he is risen. Say back with me, he is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. So join us as we worship through song. We're going to open God's word and celebrate what he did for us on Easter Sunday. Come on and worship with us. I was buried beneath my shame. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried. Oh, my. 
Well, good morning, church, and welcome to our online Easter service here at ABC. My name is Megan Miranda, and I'm the Women's Ministry Director here. And from our family to yours, we want to wish you a very happy Easter. We're so glad that you're tuning in with us today, and it is a big day. Isn't it exciting to think that all across the globe, millions of people are tuning in together with their local church to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus? And we know there's this physical distance between us, but I hope that you feel as I do, that we are still very much together and united in this. So thank you for tuning in with us. Today, in just a minute, we're gonna get to hear a special message from Pastor Tom. But before that, I just wanna remind and encourage you that the ministry here at ABC is very much alive and well. You might tire of hearing us say that everything looks different right now, but friends, God is not different. He has not changed. He is the same as he was yesterday, as he is today and will be tomorrow. And he is continuing to move and act in our community. Our kids are still hearing God's word. Our middle school and high school students are still continuing to grow and be discipled. We have men's and women's Bible studies that are still thriving. And I hold fast to the belief that God is doing something very special in this unique season with us. Do you believe that with me, church? I trust that you do. And as we see God continue to move in our community, I wanna invite you to give financially. Your generosity is really what makes it possible for us to continue serving our community. And you can do that right now online by going to abcchurch.org give. Again, that's abcchurch.org give. And if you are joining us as a visitor today, please don't feel any pressure to give. We're just so glad that you are joining us. Well, friends, we are about to move on with our service and hear from Pastor Tom, but first I invite you to pray with me. God, I just thank you so much for this morning. I thank you for the joy that it represents for um, your resurrection power, God. May we rest in that. I pray that you would unite us in spirit so that we would know that we are not here alone, God, but rather worshiping here and celebrating with our brothers and sisters. So I just pray blessings on families, God, this morning um, for our community. I pray that you would use Tom, God, just to deliver the message that you would have us here today. So we love you and we thank you and we give you this morning. Well, welcome to Super Bowl Sunday. That's right, it's Super Bowl for the church. We call it Easter. But I gotta tell you, this is the craziest Easter I've ever experienced in my 35 years of ministry. By all rights, there should be 2,500 people in a stadium packed together singing 
praise songs to Jesus, celebrating the resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ. And here we are sequestered in our homes, socially isolating. Who would have ever thought that this was even possible? I can remember that fateful Thursday when we got the message from the county that we were to isolate in our homes. And the first thing I thought of was, well, what about Easter? And they said it was going to be until Easter, and I thought, did that include Easter? And as it became apparent over the next several days, Easter was going to look very different this year, and it does. But what remains the same is, is that God is still God, Jesus is still risen, and regardless of where we are today, we are celebrating the resurrection of our Savior. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3, says it this way, For I delivered to you as of first of importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. He appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of, all, uh, most of whom remain till now, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all of the apostles, and last of all, as one untimely born, he appeared to me, Paul, also. My friends, this really is the good news of the gospel. This is what we're here today to speak of on this Easter. Easter is good news. But do you realize that the very first Easter was anything but good news? When Mary went to that tomb, Jesus' body was missing. And she ran to tell the other disciples that he was gone. It was terrible news. Jesus' body was missing. <laughs> Just like for me, thinking about an empty stadium and us not being able to gather together seemed like terrible news initially. So it was initially on that first Easter, it was bad news. On November 7th, 1876, Abraham Lincoln had been dead for 10 years. There was a uh, group of counterfeiters who had the intention of stealing the body of Abraham Lincoln and holding it ransom. Fortunately, the Secret Service had infiltrated this group of counterfeiters so that the day in which they went to steal the body and dig it up as they began to do so, the local authorities came and arrested them and the plot was foiled. But can you imagine what it would have been like for America if their beloved president had been taken and held ransom? We use our imaginations now moving back 2,000 years to imagine what it would be like to be Mary, to be John, and to be Peter, to have experienced the death of Jesus and then to find out that the body had been stolen. It's hard to imagine what they must have been going through when they heard that hyster hysterical announcement from Mary. John, the apostle, writes of the account some 50 years later but for him, when he's writing this in John chapter 20, it's as if it happened just yesterday. In John 20, verse 1, we have the account, and here's what it says. And now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone already taken away from the tomb. And so she ran and came to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. And said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. And so Peter and the other disciple went forth, and they were going to the tomb, and the two were running together. The other disciple ran ahead faster than Peter and came to the tomb first, and stooping and looking in, he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but did not go in. And so Peter also came following him and entered the tomb. And he saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the face cloth which had been on the head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in uh, place by itself. So the other disciple, who had first come to the tomb, then also entered, and he saw, and he believed. 
For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. And so the disciples went away to their own homes. Outside of Jerusalem, the gate of Damascus, there is a beautiful garden today that uh, is at the base of a hill they call the Hill of the Skull. And it's said there that that's where the body of Jesus was laid. They call it the garden tomb. According to the other gospel accounts, Mary was not alone. The other women that were with her that morning, when Mary ran back to tell the disciples, they stayed there and encountered two angels. Uh, it was before the sun had risen, some time in the morning, perhaps 5, 5.30 in the morning, that they made their way uh, to this tomb. Um, and as they did, they recognized that the stone that was once in front of the tomb was now rolled away. When Peter and John heard the account, they went running to the tomb. And when John got there first, he looked in and, and saw coming probably out now of the sunlight and looking into the darkness of that tomb, saw the linen cloths laying there and believed, in fact, that Mary was probably wrong, that Jesus' body was still there, even though it was hard to see. Um, Peter, though, he broke through, and when he went inside, he recognized, in fact, yes, the linen cloths were there, but the body wasn't, and that the face cloth was rolled up and set aside. As he was in the tomb, then John followed him into the tomb and recognized that, in fact, Mary wasn't wrong as he first thought, but, in fact, sadly, she was right. The body was gone. Jesus wasn't there. And then he believed. <laughs> the question becomes for us, what did he believe? Well, according to this account, uh, what he believed is that uh, Jesus' body was missing. It's not as if he believed that Jesus was resurrected, as some suppose when they read the account, as we look at the account later in retrospect. What he was thinking at this moment was, in fact, the body had been taken. taken. In verse 9 it says this, For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must first rise. The New International Version says it this way. They did not, they still did not understand from the scriptures that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Clearly this suggests that at this moment in time, John thought the body was stolen, just like Mary thought the body was stolen. First glimpse, he thought she was wrong. Sadly, at this moment, now he realizes she was right. There's nothing like experiencing death, the loss of someone we love, and now it has been complicated with this new revelation that the body of Jesus Christ was stolen. And so the disciples return to their homes. It's like us today. We find out that we are fighting an invisible enemy this virus, and what are we told to do? We're told to retreat to our homes, and so that's what we do. Mary re-enters the picture again. She had returned following the disciples, and uh, she had remained outside, and then when they left, she went inside. And, uh, and so this morning, I want to ask a question about this whole event about Easter. It's not simply, you know, um, do you believe? The real question for Easter for us today is, is what do you believe? What do you believe about Easter? At this point, the body was gone for Mary. She enters into the tomb, and, um, and this is what it says in verse 11 as we continue on with this account. But Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping, and so as she wept, she stooped and she looked into the tomb and she saw two angels in white, one at the head, one at the feet, where the body of Jesus was laying. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, because they've taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. And 
when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. (laughs) These are brave words for a small woman. Uh, Supposing that someone had taken the body, perhaps even this gardener, asking if he knew where the body was, and if he did, that she, in fact, would go retrieve the body. Imagine that, this little woman carrying a 150-pound body that's filled with probably 100 pounds of incense and all kinds of things to preserve the body, a 250-pound package, so to speak. I think perhaps she was the first lady to ever uh, participate in CrossFit, (laughs) pun intended. The fact of the matter is, is that she wanted Jesus' body back and she would do anything to get it. Verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my Father and your Father and my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene came announcing to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he said these things to her. You know, this account focuses on Mary crying. Outside the tomb initially, still convinced that the Lord was dead and that, her bo- and that the body was gone, she sees the two angels sitting there and they ask the question, why are you weeping? You ever had a conversation with someone when you're speaking to them, you know, they're talking to you, but they're looking past you, you know, and you notice that they're not even looking at you. They're not looking into your eyes, but they're looking beyond you. I think that's what was happening here. She was having a conversation with these two, but they were looking beyond her. And finally, she like turns around and looks and says, who in the world are they looking at, you know? And she sees someone behind her who she supposes to be the gardener who asks the very same question. Why are you weeping? Little did she know that this was not a time for weeping, but this would be a time for rejoicing and praising God and thanksgiving because the fact of the matter is she is not alone, just like we are not alone today. You know, when you read the gospel accounts, the implication is clearly that she should have known this. Uh, We look back on it and, and ask the question, why didn't they know this? Jesus over and and over uh, explained to them what was going to happen, that he was going to die, that he was going to be resurrected from the dead, and yet for some reason they didn't understand that. He had such a hard time convincing them that he was going to die in the first place. It was only when he was taken away to the cross, crucified on the cross, that they realized that in fact, yes, he was going to die. To their utter dismay, I believe that Mary is so much like us. We find ourselves in an unbelievable situation, something that we never could have imagined with this COVID-19. And it's really easy for us to forget the promises. Uh, It's easy for us to forget about what God has said to us in the past. Uh, We start feeling sorry for ourselves and things begin to spiral. Isn't it amazing how quickly we forget the promises of God? The story is told of Martin Luther, the great reformer who suffered a great deal from depression and in one particular time was in a deep three-day depression. And his wife came down the stairs one day dressed in black in mourning clothes. And Martin Luther looks up at her in surprise and says, who died? And she said, God died. To which he responded, woman, God could never die. How could you say such a thing? And to which she replied, from the way that you've been acting lately, it seems like God is dead. Friends, sometimes (laughs) the way we act, the way we feel, we act as if God is dead. God is very much alive. The tenderness of Jesus as he interacts with Mary is amazing. In fact, in The account we have, at least in my Bible, it says Mary, but in the original account, actually, Jesus used her 
Arab, uh, Aramaic name, Miriam. And when she heard her name in her heart language, uh, she recognized immediately that it was Jesus, to which she responds, Rabboni, which means teacher responding in her heart language to him. Have you ever received a phone call from a loved one and they didn't even have to identify themselves? You knew it was them. She knew it was Jesus. And she responded to Jesus with tears of joy, clinging on to him. And he says to her, I must ascend to my father. Let go of me. But go tell the others what you have experienced. And so she did. And Jesus reveals his plan, the ongoing plan of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is going to come and that even though he's going to leave again, that the Holy Spirit's going to live inside of them so that they'll never be alone again. We need to recognize this, that we are not alone. God is with us. You know, even as we experience this unique time, we are reminded again, God is here with us. And that's what Easter really is all about. That's what we're here to declare. Uh, you know, Easter is not about when I die, I get to go to heaven. Easter is about God living with us right now. It's been said that uh, everyone asks three questions at one time or another in their lives. Where do I come from? Why am I here? And the third question is this, do I really have to leave? <laughs> Nobody wants to leave. Nobody wants to die. We're afraid of dying even now. And yet God teaches us that we don't need to fear death because our life with God starts the moment that we embrace him as our savior and we will live forever and ever with the Lord. What Jesus was trying to teach these people is that you haven't lost me. I am with you always. And he was with them. And that is the good news of Easter. It started off as bad news, but it ended up being amazing news, the best news ever. And it is still the best news ever that God is still with us. God is not socially distant. He's here today with us. And Jesus longs to be a part of your life. Now, this may be a time of refinement for us. This may be a time of testing for us. In fact, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, uh, we know the verse well that says, I stand at the door and knock if anyone opens the door. You know, that kind of passage. But in verse 19, it says something really interesting. Look what it says. For those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You see, Jesus, when he enters into our lives, allows us to overcome trials, the pressures of life here on this earth. He is a trusted friend. He has gone before us and he is with us. Like Moses said to Joshua in Deuteronomy 31.8, the Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you. He will not forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. No one wants to be alone. No one wants to do life alone. When's the time that you felt the most alone in your life? Maybe it's now. And for, again, those of you who are alone during this time, it, it, as I said before, it breaks my heart to think of you being alone, even today listening to this message. When I think about being alone, probably the most lonely I've ever been was in 1996. Uh, I was going to meet a group of people with an organization called Gospel for Asia in India. And I um, flew alone. I, I went there alone. I needed to get to southern India to meet them, and I was going by myself. And when we were flying into what used to be called Bombay, <laughs> that changed the name to Mumbai, 
Uh, we were flying in as the plane was circling. I looked down and I saw the unbelievable picture of these slums completely surrounding this airport. I had been to Tijuana. I'd been to Mexico City. I've seen slums before. I'd never seen anything like this. And as we flew into that airport and the plane landed and I got off the plane, I had a seven hour delay until my next flight. And so I thought I would kind of scout out my airline and the gate and, and all that. I was shocked at how small this international airport for a country of a, a billion people was. And, uh, and so I'm looking and I can't find the airline, Indian Air, I, I can't find it. I can't find a gate. There's just so few gates there, and I'm wondering where my plane is going to depart from. And so I walk up to a police officer, and I ask him where the gate for Air India is. And he responded in English, but for the life of me, I couldn't understand him. And he said something, and I, and I just was asking him to repeat himself. And, and eventually I, I figured out that, uh, that he was saying domestic, domestic. Air, and then he said something else, which turned out to be airport, domestic airport, domestic airport is what he was saying. And finally, I figured out that he's saying domestic airport. And I looked at him, I said, domestic airport. And, and, I, and I thought, well, I guess I'm at the international airport. Uh, I said, so where is the domestic airport? I was looking out the window trying to figure out where it was. And he points and he says, 10 kilometers. To my dismay, I thought, oh my gosh. I looked out the window and there were just throngs of people out the window. And I asked him, is there a bus? Is there a shuttle to get to the domestic airport? Because it's 10 kilometers away. I didn't know how far 10 kilometers was. I knew it was a ways away. And I remember what it looked like in those slums. And he said, taxi. <laughs> uh, the taxis are a little different in India. They were called tuk-tuks. <laughs> and, uh, and the tuk-tuk is what takes you to the domestic airport. I had to navigate through those, what I believe to be thousands of people, all trying to grab me, grab my stuff, get into a little tuk-tuk, travel through the slums to get the domestic airport. I was terrified. I felt so all alone. And you know who I thought of during that moment? I thought of Joshua. I thought of the words from Moses, you know, fear not. You know, the Lord your God is with you. And so I just started claiming promises of Scripture because of the fear that I was experiencing at that time. By the grace of God, you know, I was able to navigate that. I know it may not seem like that big a deal, but for me it, it was. It was a scary experience. But the presence of the Lord I felt in a way that I can't even describe. Even during the loneliest times or some of the loneliest times of my life, God's presence is there for us. In John chapter 16, verse 31, it says this, You believe at last, Jesus answered. But a time is coming, and has come, when you will be scattered, each one to his own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. Isn't it interesting? Jesus is specifically referring to the fact that these disciples would leave him, go to their homes, and leave Jesus, okay? Isn't it interesting that we are in our homes and uh, that, that, in a sense, we feel scattered for this Easter? But what Jesus was trying to teach is that in the world, you're going to have trials. You're going to have challenges. These are trials. These are challenges that we're experiencing today. But proof positive from Jesus' resurrection that we're not alone. Just like Jesus had the Father, so we have him in our lives today. We have overcome the world. Why? Not because of our strength, not because of our power, but because Jesus has overcome the world. Let me ask you a question. Have you opened the door of your heart to Jesus? Have you allowed him to come in? When I think of the narrative of, of Easter, I see four kinds of people. And I think today, listening, there are four kinds of people listening to me today. There is Mary, who searched for Jesus and came to believe in Jesus. Maybe you're searching today 
that you're logging on and you're watching this because you're searching, you're looking for answers. Mary looked for Jesus and found him. You can find Jesus too. You can open the door of your heart to Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. Thomas, he's famous, why? Because he doubted Jesus. In fact, he wouldn't believe in Jesus unless he could physically touch him, even after all of the reports of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Maybe you're today a doubter. Uh, you know, God is not threatened by that. God understands that even in our own lives, the doubts that we have. All of us at one time or another doubt. Maybe today you move over from doubt to belief. That you choose faith over fear during this time, during this season. That God is using this in your life as a, a time of reflection, a time to reprove you. Uh, in some ways rebuke us, all of us, from our dependence on so many other things other than him, we have an opportunity right now to be able to reflect upon what do we really believe? Whom do we believe in? God understands our doubts, but at some point we need to move to faith. Peter denied him. Sadly, there are times when we have all denied him. Uh, so many times, you know, I think of 1 John 2.15, do not love the world nor the things of the world. Man, we've fallen in love with the world and the things of the world. And this is a time for us to reflect on what's really important. Some of us have denied the Lord at times, uh, just like Peter did. But you know, God's not done with us. God is a God who forgives us, who welcomes us back. And so it is that he welcomed Peter back and that Peter had a bright future. Maybe you have been in a state of, of denial for a period of time as well. God is there with open arms wanting to welcome you back as well. But there's also a fourth person, and there's Judas, who betrayed Jesus and denied him to the end. There are some of you today that have denied Jesus as well. But you know, don't be like Judas. Don't deny him to the end. Embrace Jesus as your Savior. Let's take Easter and make it great news. Embrace Jesus as your Savior and Lord. The greatest thing that I could tell any of you today is that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin, that he was buried, that he was raised again, just like the scriptures said, and that he is alive today at the right hand of God the Father, and that he knocks on the doors of people's hearts, and if anyone will open the door, and let him come in, he will come and dine with them. You, friends, are not alone. And that is the good news of Easter. And that is what we celebrate. We may not be together physically, but we are together by the grace of God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much that this first Easter, which was terrible news initially, became the greatest news ever. And all these years later, all these Easter's later, we celebrate a risen Savior. And the truth of the matter is we are not alone. God, I would pray for any who have yet to place their faith in you, that they would acknowledge their need for you, acknowledge their own sin, ask for forgiveness, and say, God, I want to follow after you. I receive Jesus as my Savior and I purpose to follow after him. Lord, we can search, we can doubt, at times even deny, but I pray that none listening to this would betray you. And so, Father, we say to you, thank you. Thank you for the amazing gift of your son. It's in the powerful name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter. Just respond in worship. So you are here, move in our midst. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. 
working in this place I worship you I worship you You are here Moving in our midst I worship you I worship you You are here Working in this place I worship you I worship you You're the way maker, come on Cause you are the way maker Miracle worker, promise keeper Light in the darkness My God, that is who you My God, that is who you are. Yes, it is. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Yes, you are. You are here.
miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Would you just sing one more with us this morning? that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine? So great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross, and the cross is spoken, I am forgiven. King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Come on, we sing hallelujah. Praise the
Man, there isn't uh, anything I could think of that brings more hope than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And what we want you to uh, know and believe in this season is that Jesus wants community for you. He wants to be together with you. And our hope at ABC is to be a place where you can connect. If you don't have a community, if you don't have uh, close friendships in in our community right now, we want to be that. And, And although we look forward to the day when we get to gather up on campus again at Atascadero Bible Church and and I long to give you a hug and a high five Um, that day's coming we know that but in the meantime we would love to be a place where you can connect and so please uh, don't hesitate to reach out give us a phone call send us an email we've got groups that are happening throughout the week Um, we're getting creative with how we do those groups um, in this season but we want you to have a meaningful place to connect and find the hope that's in Jesus Christ Thanks for joining us this morning. Happy Easter.